It's easier to change out instruments. That's a big one. You can't just throw another telescope on your fork mount. It's pretty bolted on there as far as I know. I've never had one, so correct me if I'm wrong. But and for most of them, it's pretty hard to get different uh, telescopes on it. Um, you don't need a field derotator. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and there's a whole bunch of very, this is probably the most important one here. And the reason why I believe almost every, every really good astrophotographer or anybody who's on the really high end of it uses gems is because there's just not many manufacturers of high quality fork mounts. They're, they're, now, this is surprising because you think, well, all of the big you know, observatories, most of them have fork mounts. Well, they're specially produced fork mounts by, you know, they cost millions of dollars. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've got that kind of money, I encourage you to do it. Just yeah, let me have some time. What's that? They also use field rotators. They do. Yeah, they sure do. Yeah, they absolutely do. Or they, uh, or they equatorially mount them, which you can do as well. All the modern ones are used field rotators. Oh, do they really? Yeah. See, I don't know these things. So, fork mounts, I'm not going to get into those. Um, very lightweight. Um, they're not, uh, slightly less stable. Um, not easily separated. Uh, from the from the from the telescope, so it's it's a little bit difficult. Also, keep in mind that the scope and the mount are all one unit in most cases with celestrons and the mead. So if you get like a 14 incher, um, where you can put a 14 inch telescope, I can set up my RC, for example, by myself. No component is more than about 40. Well, the telescope's like 50 pounds, but you know if you get a 16 inch celestron and a fork mount, that's a really heavy instrument. Um, uh, it's not as flexible, uh, it's harder to swap tubes, and this is the most important one in bold here. They're just not produced with astrophotography in mind. Almost every fork mount that you're going to see out there, and I think RC Optical Systems is the only manufacturer that I'm aware of that produces an amateur grade fork mount that is really superb quality, and that's for their 20 plus inch RC series. You know, they're big scopes. They produce an awesome fork mount. Um, they're the only ones that I know of that really produce a fork mount that's really designed for astrophotography. Um, you can do astrophotography with, with the fork mounts that are out there, but I'm talking about really designed and built for it. Um, the advantages, very intuitive to point. I, first day out, oh, I see how that works. Very easy. Very inexpensive compared to the, an equivalent equatorial mount, uh, for the most part. Uh, easy setup, um, you know, very straightforward. Um, very versatile for visual. I, I find uh, a, a, a good uh, alt azimuth uh, mount just great for visual use. You don't have to mess around. The pointing is easy. The IP stays nice and low. The you know, mount's not contorted all over the place. It's really, really easy to use. Uh, okay, I'm going to start moving a little faster here because this is going way too slow. Um, some of the high quality mounts, I'm just going to stick with those. Paramount, Astrophysics, Takahashi, Lowe's Mandy, Mountain Instruments. I have those roughly in descending order in terms of their overall quality. Mountain Instruments, Lowe's Mandy are probably about the same, but I couldn't get them next to each other, so nobody would be offended by that. Paramount, the best mount that's out there in my opinion, um, followed by Astrophysics and Takahashi, Lowe's Mandy Mount Instruments. Moderate, CGE Series by Celestron, LX Series, CPC Series. Um, those can be moderate quality mounts. They can also be like the lowest of the low quality mounts, just depending on the luck of the draw. I mean, there's some that are great and some that are just horrible out there. Um, advanced Series, ASGT, very low cost. Um, and one of the key things here uh, to remember you can do great things with a low quality mount. You can do absolutely amazing things. You just have to tune your optics and your camera for it a little bit. Don't try an image at 3,000 millimeters on an ASGT mount. Unless you're incredibly skilled and incredibly lucky, you are going to be frustrated forever trying to do that. Um, some of the major, uh, the major factors here are the, is the peak to peak periodic error. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. Um, but uh, bottom line, if it's greater than about five arc seconds, um, you need to start really thinking about your optics and what focal lengths you want to image at because you get to 10, 20, one arc minute, which you can see with some of the LX series meads. Um, you, you really need to be careful um, what you put on there because it's going to frustrate you in a major way. So let's think about this. Um, and if you're thinking about an astrophotography rig, which I'm assuming many of us are, in my opinion, again, this is just opinion, I think the mount is the most important component of your system. And I think most people, you know, Dave is nodding his head right now, I think most people would agree with me that are, are really into this. Um, the mount defines everything else. You can put a superb quality telescope and camera on a piece of crap mount, and guess what you're going to get out of it? Crap. <laughs> Absolute crap. Uh, so it is probably the most important. And I can tell you, when I sat down to buy uh, my astrophotography system, after like three iterations of Celestron equipment that I bought and, and had great success with and did some really cool things. 
um, I said, okay, I'm going to take every bit of money that I had saved, every bit, and I'm going to buy a mount. And then in a year or two, I'm going to take every bit and buy a telescope. And then in a year or two more, I'm going to take every bit and buy a camera. The camera needs to come last. Take my word on that because prices always come down. And if you buy the camera first, you're going to be frustrated because by the time you get the <coughs> amount and the optics to put on it, you'll be like, oh, the camera's half the price. You know? So uh, definitely think about it. Um, again, you know, I, again, I, and I hope not to offend anybody, but the Mead and Celestron fork mounts, think twice. Very popular. I know a lot of people have them. They're wonderful for visual use, and some people have great luck with them. Think very carefully. If you specifically want to do astrophotography, I don't recommend these mounts at all. Um, if budget restricts you to lower end equipment, think about a short focal length telescope. My general rule of thumb is if you're imaging at more than a thousand millimeters when you start out in astrophotography, you're setting yourself up for significant frustrations, failure, mm -hmm. and possibly getting out of the hobby because you can't yeah. produce the kinds of results that you want. Um, get a lens. Get a, get a wide angle lens. For your for your uh, DSLR, you can do some amazing things with a 200 millimeter lens, and that yeah. lens is like 400 dollars if you get an f/4. Uh, 800 dollars <laughs> for, for an f/2.8. <laughs> oh well, f/2.8, you're going premium here. I mean, I'm well, talking the f/4. You know, L L series. The f/4 is about is about four or five hundred dollars yeah, used somewhere at the ballpark. Yeah, they're not too bad. They're That's pretty. Nice. Have for you. Can you amplify on uh, with the the bead mounts, the fork mounts, what? What are the deficiencies that we're talking the about? The major here? deficiency that we're talking about, in my view, that I've seen, and I have never used one of these mounts before, so we're deeply into the realm of my personal opinion based on the things that I've read online and people that I've talked to. So people are going to differ with me on this, and that's totally okay. You know, different perspectives is fine. Um, the periodic error that's commonly reported on the LX200 mounts is astronomically high. Because of the plastic gears. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is, but I just know that people have reported on the Yahoo groups and things like that a periodic error in the in the order of one arc minute. Wow. Okay, Ooh. that's 60 arc seconds, right? <laughs> you know, my system has a peak to peak periodic error of five arc seconds, and that has caused me some problems at 3,000 millimeters. That has caused me some problems. I mean, if you're doing four or five second guide exposures and you get a two and a half arc second swing, when your pixel scale is 0.62 arc seconds per pixel, guess what? You've got really bloated oval stars, slightly oval stars over the course of a long exposure. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. I need a quick count of how many people are going to watch coffee. Nope. Yeah. Going to watch what? The coffee. Coffee. Four, four, five, six. Shoot it up. Hey, keep your hand, keep your hands up for a second. <laughs> We're waving them. You can't count three. <laughs> yeah. Four. Half the people here. What do you count? Three count. It's coffee. wonderful coffee. Want coffee? Oh, no. <laughs> wonderful coffee. Not just yeah, coffee. Right. <laughs> oh, let me tell you how this is going to work. I made it really, really, really concentrated and strong. So when you pour it out, you're going to pour it into the cups. And then what you're going to do is take it over here to this dispenser no, and it's 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 pour hot water in there to taste. Okay? And then your extra room if you want half and half in sugar. Okay? So what did you say? That 50 50? Water and coffee? Yeah. This is strong. Okay. And it's, the first batch is organic Peru, the second batch will be um, Colombian Suprema. Well, I'm trying to get another one big and I'm not happy with it. You see what? why we do this here? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so that was one issue. The second one is um, the quality of the wedges that are generally available. Um, they, they, not, they don't give you a lot of rigidity, and the, and the telescope tripods that come with it don't give you a lot of rigidity, in my opinion, what I've seen. Um, so you're going to get a lot of vibrations. You're going to get a lot of things that, that are problematic. Um, and again, all of these things can be overcome by tuning, gear replacement, getting a good custom wedge. You know, these are all problems that can be overcome. Um, but you're going to have to overcome them, believe me, um, if, you start, if you go down this road. The bigger problem that I have with the systems is that those are schmidt cassegrain systems which have some significantly long focal lengths. So every little error that you have with your mount is now magnified by 10, 20, 30 times because of the speed of your optical system. Okay, so like I said, I don't know that Mead sells a system that's less than a thousand millimeters that comes in their, in their uh, SCT series on the fork mounts. I think they're all like 1800 and above. So right there, you violated what I would say one of my big tenets in astrophotography is going right to the long focal lengths.